Hi. Uh, so today I have with me someone from the Mars generation who aspires to become the first women Indian women to step on Mars. She is also UAE's zero gravity winner, a TED speaker. She is among one of the 24 leaders and innovators in STEM and space under the age of 24. Please welcome Chandral Kamal. So so are you the first aspiring women to go to Mars or are you the first Uh, aspiring Indian women to go to Mars. Like we know the difference between two, but how are these different when we talk about the technicalities? So I think uh, that's a very interesting question. I think there is again it comes back to um, just like heritage, and it comes back to being like you know have, saying Indian woman rather than saying you know aspiring to be just the first woman on Mars. I think it holds a lot of power because oh, um, when I was growing right. up. Um, my STEM role models were Kalpana Chawla and you know astronaut Sunita Williams, and I looked up to them because I could see myself in their shoes. If you know what I mean, I could see myself like you know, we, apart from just being similar in appearances, I could see that you know they had faced similar things. You know, growing up, be it like you know in terms of culture, in terms of education, they faced quite similar things, having Indian heritage or just being Indian. And um, this is something I want to propagate with my. Uh, ambition as well. I want to inspire girls, and not just any girls, but Indian girls, to see that you know, yes, indeed, you can see yourself in my boots, and you can. Um, if I can do it, so can you. You know what I mean? And uh, I think there is great, yeah. tremendous power in saying, um, "My dream is to become the first Indian woman on Mars," rather than just saying, "My dream is to become the first woman on Mars." And at the end of the day, I mean. Space exploration is a global collaboration. It's not just going to be the work of a single country or single nationality right. that gets us to Mars. It will be the work of the entire globe. But I still think there is power in saying first Indian woman rather than just woman on Mars. That's that's really inspiring. That's really inspiring. So when we talk about this this whole idea of space science, how much difficult or easy is it for a person to take up such a thing as a full time career? Okay. So in terms of professional course I you can still get a degree in aerospace engineering you can still get a degree in any space sector I, I, astronomy astrophysics cosmology there's so many and I'm just like you know off the top of my head these are just a a few fields that you can get a bachelor's degree and I know in certain cases even go up to a phd and um so I would okay. say in terms of um getting like you know the the degree you need to support your ambitions it's not impossible um you know you have to it's it's it all comes down to a matter of finding the right university with the right programs that interest you and research that you um want to pursue um maybe in your masters or your phd or whatever it is even in undergraduate um so it's not really hard to get a professional degree per se um but i would say in india like you said it's not very traditional um the traditional paths in right. india are like lawyer engineer doctor and i i know i have heard so many stories of people saying like i'm really interested in space but i don't know how to convince my parents because they think um my only option is to become a lawyer or a doctor and i think the world is slowly coming to terms that space is like you know the sector is growing the industry is growing and after right. um the announcement of like you know the Artemis mission and then the the Mars mission planned by NASA in 2030s and now a lot of space agencies are contributing as well for example i know um india's gaganyaan mission and uh the uae coming up as well um there's so many countries that are that have just started to set their foot like into the space industry started investing and i think it is um we are seeing somewhat of a renaissance a rebirth of the golden age of space. I know in the beginning like you know the the very first golden age was the space race between um the US and Russia. 
uh, the USSR in uh, the 1960s, but it's no longer a race anymore. It's more about collaboration. Right. It's more about countries working together, and there's no such competition going on. Although it, you know, uh, you know, space agencies may be competing to send rovers and such, but the, I would say it's not like how it was in the 1960s. And um, global collaboration is the essence, really. Is uh, the right. the way the space sector is heading right now, and um, as the industry grows over the next few decades, I think we will see a lot more people, a lot more kids pursuing careers in STEM, uh, in space in particular, in STEM, um, and um, I think it will eventually grow to become a traditional path. So maybe not right. at the moment. Maybe not at the moment. I still get weird stares when I say I want to become when I want to go to space. I still get weird stares. But um, it is becoming more and more normalized. And as um, India, you know, this is uncharted territory still for India. And as we step more into this field, um, I think uh, you will see a lot more interest, and you will see a lot more people pursuing these paths. And I, I think you will also see a boom in universities offering these courses in India. So um, it's it's growing really. The sector is growing. Okay. So do you also think that India lacks infrastructure required for you know? for extensive training programs for space um i wouldn't say lack i would say we're still in the growing stage you can't ask a sapling why haven't you born a fruit yet it's still a sapling it's still growing and it's still going to be a few right. more years before it grows into a fully grown tree is mature enough to bear fruit so i think we're not lacking we're still growing and coupled with public interest I think we will see um, better infrastructure in the coming years, and there's nothing wrong with where India is right now. We're still growing, and it's completely fine to, um, you know, like it's completely fine that we are um, currently lacking job op opportunities. But as indicated by, like, you know, private space organizations um, being founded in in India over the last couple of years, in India. we can see a rising right, trend, right. and uh, we can see that this infrastructure is growing. And it's only a matter of time before this growth becomes exponential. So I wouldn't say we're lacking, we're growing. That's what I would say.